Oh, here we go, inside beautiful Brislin Church. Oops. Isn't that lovely? It's got the old altar up over there. Fabulous artwork here. And there's a plaque there, what's that say? Andre Louise Germain I German Germain God or God it nineteen fifty two. Got all these little ones that little holy water. William Marsh, head of Leviathan, late general of His Majesty's forces. You guys can read that. I can get my phone to focus. And colonel to the king, king's own light infantry. He died in eighteen eighty-two, age seventy-five. His military career in culture and guards. 1871. He embarked in 1793 with the troops for Holland. And with the exception of the affair at Lionel's, uh, Lionel's was present in every action guards were engaged in to return into the army in 1795 he again embarked for west india and was taken taking st lucia commanded the storming party at Baguia near the island of St. Vincent. Blimey's a bit of a... There's a nice bit of story there. It's funny, this is... Uh, this is a bit like the TARDIS, it seems smaller on the outside. Look at the ornate work in that. Jesus, Jesus, it's nice, beautiful artwork, all these little coves and there's the belfry. And there's some nice stained glass windows there. Beautiful. I bet they had a good Easter thing up here. And there's the pulpit. Let me. That's where the guy goes up, whoever, and ceremonies to everybody. I take it that's Mary and baby Jesus there. Get the lovely. Uh, Beautiful ceiling up there. Staff. What are these plaques here? Near this place is interred the body of Safana, the wife of Christopher Toker, 
of this parish, gent and daughter, Richard Matthew of St. Q, gent, declared deceased, deciphered, deciphered, which departed this life May 12th in the year of the Lord 1686, being in the 25th year of her age. So that's Sophana, wife of Christopher Toker, and the daughter of Richard Matthew, 1T of St. Q. One piece of slate, folks, look at that. God, those daffodils are smelling lovely, I'll tell you. I've not got smell of vision on here, unfortunately. Uh, I can't see anything on here. It's usually around the edges, the names. See nothing on that one. But again, it's all right. Look at that. It's really old. It's got to be 17 something. Because that one over there was 16. Another lovely little church. Nice to come in here. A little tree for Easter, I would have thought that is. And there's the old christening bowl. See a few of them as they go around. Right, so this is Blizzard Church. Let's go out and look some more headstones. Okay, I spotted this one just now. Oh, look at this. A wife of, I'd say that's Mary, the wife of George, who departed this life in 1809, aged. Oh, age 17 years. I think that's just part of the stone. I'd say age 17, she's probably a daughter rather than a wife. But it's 1809, so. And here we have another one here that I saw. Here lies the body of Elizabeth Lean Dougal. Uh, oh, Elizabeth Lean, daughter of Robert and Hefta Lean. This parish, who was buried in February 1709. First year of her age. Yeah, it's not. No life, is it? Edward Copeland, William Edward Copeland, born April 17th, 1869, died August 1903. That's a chunk of stone there. Well, two or three. You have the cross of E1. 
and the other, this other three sections would be separate stones. Clever. Very clever these masons were. John Selgrave, late of the late Mounted Rifles, who died at Tregenna on New Year's Day 1925, aged 63. Also his beloved wife, Mina Selgrave, who died peacefully away on the 9th of June 1960, aged 100, RIP. Gosh, she lived a lovely old age. Malcolm, Ar Malcolm Arthur Watney, Tregenna, Blisland, 1893 to 1976. Anne Hodge, beloved wife of John Hodge of this village, who died in uh, October the 9th, 1874, age 63. Also, John. Son of the above, who died January the 20th, 1850, aged 15. Oh, blimey, that's Hodge. There's quite a few familiar names here, folks. Some of the ones pointing this way are very hard to read. A picture of George Henry. Beloved son of George. Sandercock. Okay, Sandercock. So it's George Henry, son of George and Elizabeth Sandercock of this parish. Departed this life. Um, His life, I can't see no date. In eighteen seventy five, aged eleven years. Right, folks, we're coming to an end now, by the look of it. Edward Vernon Collins. his son son of Edward it's a big old slab 
bit of moorland stone I would have thought. Lovely, made to last, last forever. Here we've got Samuel Cowling. Of Trent Creek, he died 1864, age 56. Also, Nancy, his wife, died 1889, age 84. And also, of Alfred John Cowling, their grandson, died 1868, aged seven months. Yeah. That's Cowling, Samuel Cowling. Trend Creek. There we go. Like Pierce here. Pierce with a s Pierce with a C this time. Frances Anne, beloved wife of Elijah Pierce. Died at Brisland in 1895, aged 39. Again, look at the lovely, oh, I love these here. And here we have John Trathui there, who died at Moss in this parish, 1875, aged 44, also. Mary Ann, his wife, of the above, March 23rd, 1890, 1891, age 61. And also George, son of, son of the above, who died at Tower Dread, uh, Heard. Yeah, Tara Dreth, November the 4th, age 19. I just hope you can see these. I tried to tune in, but me, uh, the camera seems to be tuning out all the time. And here's another Pierce with a C. Humphrey Pierce, Mary, the wife of Humphrey Pierce, who died at Pendrift in this parish, the seventeenth of November, eighteen forty-four, is that? In the fifty-ninth year of her age, this stone was erected by her memory. In her memory, by her sorrowing family, her body is returned to the dust from when it came. Oh, a lovely place here. There's several of the newer ones over there. Let's see if I can get a picture, if I can get back far enough. These are a bit more uh, you've, even though these are several years into the future, you've still got the same names here. You've got you got Roe, you've got Collins, Quartz, Watson I can see, Hawking. They're all still here. the memory of Ruth Marion Richards and Frederick William Richards, DCOM, MC, Major Royal Engineers, 1890 to 1979. That's 
one. Ah, we've got uh, Elizabeth Ann, beloved wife of William Manerton, who died in 1927, aged 62. Also, Jim, son of the above, who was killed in France, March 25th, 1918, aged 26. A lot of forces here. Frederick Thomas, husband of Laura Johns. Age 56, he died in 1928. Right, folks, here's uh, Mary Laxton Davy. Died in March, March the 15th, 1931, age 74. And her beloved husband, Joseph Davy, died in 1946, age 86. That's beautiful. So what are these over here then? These look uh, unusual. The body of Ernest Blacksland Clarabat, husband of Elizabeth, rector of this parish. Okay. Ernest Blacksland. Here we got Elizabeth. And she died AD 1917. John Drakes, who departed this life in May the 11th, 1780, aged 39. A nice simple little stone now, and you've got your little angel face there. Warwick Charles Marshied. It's a bit of a Right here. Yeah, there's lots of letters here, but I'm not disturbing the uh, work. Charles Morse, Morseed, Morse, Morse Head. Died March 17th, 1805. Right, folks. I'm getting ready to wrap it up now. I've enjoyed this. It's a beautiful day as well. Blue skies everywhere. This was the closest church I've got to home, so I was going to do a few, some other ones, but I thought, hang on a minute, there's Blizzland, so here we go. Thomas Oliver Rich died January 1915, age 87. Also, Lily, wife of the above, died 1926, age 81. See, these country folk live to a ripe old age, folks. Sof Sophia Rich, wife of Thomas Oliver Rich. this village. Daughter of John and Elizabeth Crowell of Laddock. You notice Laddock with two D's that who departed this life on the 24th day of October 1865, aged 34 years. Now if I can read this one. 
All right. WH Cowling, late of Trewint. Died in February 28th, 1904, aged 69. Another cowling. Cowlings are still in the area. There's Retallic over there. Thomas Henry Philp. Another Philp. Hoskin with an E. Deebel I can see there. There you go. Thomas Henry Philp. A late of Penant Farm. Sorry, Thomas Henry and Annie Philp. Late of Penant Farm. Parents of Lily Gladys and John, RIP. Erected by the grandson. Here, look at these. What I'm gonna do is I'll come down from this side, I think. Um, no, that's all right, I've got it's unusual to see. A, a, a line of flat ones, flat grave like this. They obviously had rail, rails around them, and the War Department probably got all of them in the 1940s, 39, 40s to get the scrap metal. So who we got here then? Sacred to the memory of a Charlotte. Charlotte. Relict of William. Very lean is that gentleman of Barn Park in the borough of Bobman. Born February the 16th, 1791, died the 13th of November 1874. Eight eighty three. Age, sorry, three years and eight months. Oh, what a cock up. Sorry, folks. So that's Charlotte. Born 1791, died 1874. That would be 83. 83 and 83 and 8 months. Okay. This one's George Pyle, Esquire. Bacconian House. Bacconian House, 1796. His age. Uh, born April. 4th, 1796, died 1817, aged 71 years, 
also Elizabeth, wife of the above, born 1794 to 1878, 1883, was buried in, say, King Hale. Oh, sorry. He was buried at in Buckinghamshire. A long way from here, isn't it? So that's George Pyle there, and also Elizabeth, his wife. Pyle, P Y L. Can't see no E on the end. And there's two. Unusual coffin like granite graves, no markings on them as far as I can see. It's probably underneath the Here we go, Gemma. Wife of Francis W. Pye, rector of his parish, born Born 1802, died 1874 or so, to the memory of the Reverend Francis W. Pye, husband of the above, for 58 years rector of this parish. Died in February 1892, aged 89. Also Charles Son of the above, born 1870, uh, May the 17th, 1841, died in New Zealand in 1893. So that's Pi, P Y E. Charles went to New Zealand then in, in his life. Louisa Agnes Pye, daughter of Francis and Jemima 